Welcome home to St. Anne's. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you. Not because that's intentional, it's just because I happen to have a purple cane because Eric accidentally ordered two from Amazon. So, it has no actual significance. All right, it is Lent. Oof, it is Lent and it snuck up on us. Um, Very similar to the way that poor Jesus has the devil sneaking up on him today. Um, So let's talk a little bit about Lent and then a little bit about our gospel because it really, truly does matter. And I think sometimes we, um, we think of sin in the wrong ways. Um, and, and Jesus is pretty good about breaking that apart for us. So um, Lent is the 40 days before Easter. Though if you look at your calendar, calendar, you'll notice it's not exactly 40 days. And that's because Sunday doesn't count. Um, Sunday is always an Easter celebration. Um, and it does not count. So if there's something that you gave up for Lent, here is your loophole. Sundays don't count. Get it out of your system on Sunday, unless it's something really really bad, in which case, keep it out of your system. Um, but you know the church, we've always got a loophole. We got a loophole for that. Um, Sundays do not count. Um, and that 40 days um, mimics the 40 days in the wilderness that we hear about today. It is a season of preparation, um, A, for Easter, but it was also a season of preparation for Jesus to actually be prepared for ministry. Um, And and traditionally, Easter is when baptisms occur, so that's traditionally when we welcome new members um, into the church family. Um, We don't generally always do that anymore, but that's why it looks the way that it does. And sometimes I think it's just helpful to go back and say, hey, why does this look the way that it does? Because sometimes we forget. Um, So one, 40 days, nah, not exactly 40 days, but roughly 40 days, 40 days that you have to actually give something up if you gave something up or take something on if you took something on, um, whatever your Lenten discipline may be. Um, If it's just surviving 2022, that's cool too, because if you think about it, 2022 is just really saying 2020 again. Um, So... You, you do whatever you got to do to survive, people. Um, it's 40 days, roughly. Um, it's a season of preparation for um, ministry, really, um, whatever. And I know we all like to think that ministers are, so, are other people. They're not. We're all called to ministry in our own particular ways. So this is a time of deep reflection and preparation for whatever your ministry, my ministry might be. Okay. Let's talk about sin. Ooh, that's a fun one. We Episcopalians love a good sin. We do. We just, sin, sin is our, we got it. All right. So we generally in our society like to think that sin is an action, right? We have a list of what sins are. Um, they're usually things that would be considered fun. Um, I'm just going to say it. We all know it's true, right? Um, sex, drugs, rock and roll, right? Okay, um, that's not what sin is. Now, having said that, sin can be that. Sin is anything that separates you from God. Again, I'm going to say that again because it's super, super important. Sin is anything that separates you from God. We want it to be a thing, don't we? We want it to be something that's quantifiable, that's easy to make lists of, that's easy to make rules about. It isn't. Because what is sin for me is going to be different than what is sin for you. Now, some of them might be similar. But the thing is, it's not going to be a thing per se. We want it to be a thing because it's easy. It's easy to say that sex is a sin. Well, no. But can sex be a sin? Could be. Is alcohol a sin? No. But could it, could it be? It could be. It depends on why we're doing the things that we're doing. 
And that's so very, very important. And that's something that is really, really important in our gospel today, is that we get this idea that really it's, it's the thought and the belief behind the action that matters. It is not the action necessarily that is the problem. It is the belief that is bringing about the action. All right? Drinking is not a problem. Drinking can become a problem if it's being used to self-medicate something. That can be an issue. It's the belief. It is why it is happening. Do you have a belief that you are low and in fear and pathetic? And are you medicating that belief in dangerous ways? Because it is the belief that I'm low and pathetic and unworthy that is my sin. That is what's keeping me from God, not the alcohol. If you are using sex in a way that is consuming and using other humans, that is a sin. Not because sex is a sin, but because our belief that other people are a commodity worth using is a sin. It is our belief about other people that is keeping us from God, not the thing. Does that make sense? And I know it's so much harder. It's so much easier to say, here's a list of sins. Don't do these things. But that allows us to escape the real problem. And the real problem is the beliefs that you and I hold. The beliefs that are poisoning our society and our world. It is not the things that are poisoning our society and our world. It is not big trucks that are the problem. It's the reason we're driving big trucks. Are we driving them because we have toxic masculinity and that's how I prove that I'm awesome? I got a big truck, it's diesel, and I took the muffler off it, so it makes a lot. I have had people roll coal on my Prius. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what rolling coal is, don't worry about it. Just know that it is a reflection of toxic masculinity. And that is our issue. Our issue is our beliefs and what we do with them. Those are the things that keep us from God. Those are the things that harm one another, and that is our problem. So let's go over Jesus' sins, shall we? Because it might make you feel better to know that Jesus wrestled with this too. Remember, Jesus is fully human, fully divine. Remember that human peace? Jesus gets us. All right. Jesus has three temptations that he's going to wrestle with. Let's dive into those a little bit more because it can be like, oh, Jesus is hungry. Jesus wants stuff. Jesus is going to jump off buildings. Not exactly. Not exactly. They each reflect something that you and I wrestle with. Areas of sin, per se, that we all wrestle with. And at some point, when you're going to be like, oh, I don't wrestle with that one, bull. Mm. I know we got a lot of kids, so I'm not going to say what I really think about that. Okay. So Jesus' first sin, and depending on the theologian that you go with, some will say that they go up in um, importance or power, right? That's up to you how you reflect on that. The first one is the physical, right? Jesus is hungry, right? Because, you know, he's been fasting for 40 days. That's a real thrill in the desert. Yeah. So Satan comes up, and Satan says, <clears throat> you know... You don't have to be so hungry because you are the son of God. You could take these rocks over here and you could turn them into bread. You don't have to be hungry. He has the temptation, the physical temptations. You and I all have physical temptations, right? I don't need to list them all out, do I? We all know what they are. And they're not necessarily always bad, right? Eating is not bad. It is not bad for Jesus to eat. It is not bad for your physical um, desires to be met. That's not a bad thing. In fact, in some situations, it would be a very good thing. All right, so that's our first temptation. Remember, temptations are not necessarily the problem. It's why we're doing them. Okay, so that's our first one. Physical temptations, eh, it's a low-level temptation. Our low-level sins, think about it. Uh, then we get a next one, which is power. Satan says, hey, 
if you follow me, I'll give you all, I'll give you command of all this, all this stuff, right? All this area, all these people, all these things. Our second temptation is for power. And it is a universal temptation. So calm it down when we're judging other people about their desire for power. We all got it. We all have the desire for power. And that's not a bad thing. We should all have power over our, our own lives, right? The power to make decisions for ourselves. The power to impact the world around us. Power is not necessarily a bad thing, right? It's what we do with that and why that that desire and that hunger for power exists and what it's being used to feed, right? I want you guys to go out and use your power in the world. That's a good thing. I want you to go out and use power because that is how we impact the world and how we make changes in the world. That's not a bad thing. If the power is used correctly for the good of the world and for the proclamation of the gospel, that's a good thing. It can become a problem, however, right? So just second temptation is the temptation for power. The third, and this is a complicated one. This is one where everyone's like, no, I don't feel that way. Mm -hmm. The third one is the temptation for fame or popularity. And that's that if you go up on, um, on this highest pinnacle in Jerusalem and you jump and the angels will come and they'll save you, Okay, that's important because literally everyone will see it. Literally everyone will see it. And Jesus will become famous. And his gospel will spread. Do you think Jesus is ever going to feel frustrated that he's sharing the gospel and nobody wants to hear it? Nobody believes him. Nobody cares. Do you think he's ever going to feel frustrated by that? Do you think your priest ever feels frustrated by that? Do you ever feel frustrated by the fact that I'm like out here proclaiming the gospel and everyone's like, oh. Yeah. Okay. So the third temptation is for popularity or fame. To be noticed, to get attention, to feel empowered, right? Again, not necessarily a bad thing. Like, I don't want you to go out and be a social pariah. That's not necessarily a good thing. I mean, like, I don't care about popularity. Well, you know what? You probably should because we're social animals. So don't go out there being like some sort of sociopath and be like, I don't care about popularity. No. So, again, not necessarily a bad thing, right? There's nothing wrong with wanting to be famous or to be popular or to be well-liked or to feel empowered like you're making an impact on the world. Like your presence matters, that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? So can you see how all of these temptations are not necessarily a bad thing? Other important point, stupid Satan can quote scripture. That's important. That's so very, very important because you and I want to think that when sin or temptation come up to our face, we're going to recognize it. It's going to be obvious. It's going to be big and ugly and scary. No. Satan can quote scripture. And that's what really gets Jesus frustrated. Like that, like he's been pretty good about like maintaining all of it so far, right? He's like going back and forth with Satan. Like, oh, but no this. Oh, but no that. Oh, but no this. And then Satan quotes scripture. And that's when Jesus loses it. He's like, okay, you gots to go. That's important. That is important because we all are going to have these temptations. There's nothing wrong with these temptations. There's nothing wrong with these actions. The problem is the why. The thing that Jesus has to come to grips with over 40 days and 40 nights the thing that you and I have to come to grips with over our entire lives is why are we doing the things that we're doing? What are the beliefs that are reflected in the actions that you and I are taking? That is what we have to examine. And remember, remember, Satan can quote scripture. Oh, you thought I was going to give you answers. Ha! <laughs> 
That's cute. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you.